What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the channel. This is the RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, Nephew. And I'm checking in, man. So you got Canelo Alvarez. You got David Benavidez. You got David Benavidez. You got Canelo Alvarez, depending on who you see as the A-side, bro, and who you see having the advantage going into a fight of this magnitude, bro. And now you got the fans. The fans are demanding to see Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez next. They don't want to wait two fights. They want that now, bruh. Now, this is a scenario where you have uh, the the um, Canelo fans coming out saying, bruh, I don't even know where y'all want to see this fight. Canelo going to wipe the floor with this kid. Um, he, he's uh, not defensively savvy. Um, he can't protect himself. He's leaning with his head forward the whole nine. Canelo's going to dominate this dude, put him out in front of everybody, and then he ain't going to have a career to stand on, right? Do you have those who are David Benavidez fans saying um, David is going to beat the shit out of Canelo because Canelo been running for so long. Um, he knows what he's at, up, up against. He's scared of Benavidez. Um, so it is what it is in that aspect. And, uh, yeah, you have that. And then you have those who are like myself who just say, come on, bro, put them in the ring. We just want to see the fight. I don't care who wins. I don't care who wins. 168 needs a fighting champion. Now, I know Canelo fans, when y'all come over here, um, it's a certain level of kickback you get. You know, you say something, I might talk back to you. But this one, just you just got to hear me out, bro. 168 has not had a fighting champion in about two or three years. Literally, bro. And if y'all count John Ryder, bro, if y'all count John Ryder, bro, y'all, man, come on, bro. Y'all can't count that, bro. Y'all can't count that, bro. He went home to Guadalajara, Mexico. I would have rather it been Jaime Munguia. I ain't going to hold y'all, bro. Not John Ryder. I mean, y'all see how bad he did John Ryder? He did that dude bad, bro. In, in Guadalajara, Mexico, bro, the light show was nice. Canelo dressed nice coming to the ring, but he beat the dog crap out of John Ryder. That way, he ain't had no kickback. I would have rather Jaime Munguil. I would have rather David been to be there in, in Mexico, right? But it is what it is. Um, 168 has not had a champion in a long time. And let's keep it real, bro. Without David Benavidez at 168, it's been boring. It's been boring. Canelo going to 175. Canelo going to uh, 160 to see Triple G. Canelo brings uh, Jermel Charlo up to 168, um, two weight classes. Canelo fought John Ryder, uh, fight John Ryder, somebody that nobody knew, probably besides people from the UK. Um, nobody gave him a shot. I don't care if you was from the UK or from America or from Mexico. Nobody gave him a shot to win. It's a scenario where, bro, come on, man, we need some entertainment at 168. And if it wasn't for Dave Benavidez fighting the likes of Kayla Plant, which, uh, I mean, some could say it was an easier fight for him. Some could say it was tough for him um, because, you know, uh, he fought Canelo, gets knocked out in the 11th uh, fight. Dave Benavidez don't get knocked out. He makes it out. But uh, he definitely went through a hard time. Then fighting the likes of Dimitri Andrade back-to-back, -back, right? That's back-to-back. -back. That's, that's, not, that's not like he fought them months apart. He fought them back-to-back. And, uh, yeah, he had that scenario. But then you also have the idea of him fighting David Lemieux um, early 2022. So, you know, it is what it is in that aspect. But, uh, yeah, saying that to say, man, I don't know, bro. Who y'all got? Like, who y'all got when this particular scenario, bro? Um, all Canelo fans, you're welcome, bro, to talk your crap in the comment section. I'm not freaking mad at Canelo um, because here's the thing. Uh, I thought about this, bro. He technically, right, because he's, he's being, everybody is demanding, right, that Canelo fight somebody. Um, well, can't fight nobody other than Dave Benavidez, right? But I'm I'm wondering, right, do he have um, other options that he could fight where people will be okay with him not fighting Dave Benavidez? Because, bro, if I, you asking me, I don't think he's going to fight David, bro. Now, the ideal is, I don't know how real this is, all right? So don't hold me to the fact that this is real. But from what I'm hearing is the WBC mandated Canelo 90 days to start negotiations 
with David Benavidez. 90 days, okay? Now, that that's not a long time, but it's it's it should be stretched until about March, right? 90 days from now, we're stretched to about March, maybe February, but mainly March, right? So, uh, around March, Canelo should be saying, uh, I'm fighting Benavidez, or I vacate the belt, right? But then you have the idea of WBC uh, elevating Canelo to franchise champion, meaning he can fight whoever he want to fight and don't have to fight David Benavidez. Or you have the idea of Canelo lowballing David Benavidez in negotiating. Bro, it's a, it's, a, it's a dangerous game, bro. Like, it's a dirty game, bro. It's, it's dirty. At least now, I don't now I don't know about the lowballing because when I hear uh, from Jose Benavidez Sr., he's stating, bro, he don't care. I'm about the money. At the end of the day, he just want to see David Benavidez fight Canelo Alvarez. But technically, y'all, technically, it would just be for that WBC belt. See, I want to see Undisputed. That's what I want to see. 168 Canelo versus David Benavidez for Undisputed. But if Canelo was smart, all you got to do is vacate. Yeah, he might come off looking like a hoe. He might. But is it smart at the end of the day? And then you get the WBC pushed them. I don't think the WBC is willing to let Canelo Alvarez walk out that door, bro, without giving them one more fight. I just don't, bro. Y'all can take it with a grain of salt. I don't see it that way, bro, because they make a lot of money with Canelo. So it is what it is in that aspect. I don't know, man. Y'all let me know who y'all got winning this particular scenario, bro. Will it happen all together? That's what we need to get on. We need to talk about that first before we talk about anything else because he do have options. But you got Jamal Charlo, who just left the ring, versus Jose Benavidez Jr. Now, to a certain degree, it wasn't the best Jamal Charlo we've seen, right? Um, he did have a few uh, snoozer moments where he was getting clocked, but he didn't look unbeatable either. Like, you see what I'm saying? He did have a great success, but he didn't look unbeatable either. Like, he looked like Canelo could go in the ring and maybe – give him a run for his money, maybe even beat him, right? More than likely Canelo beats just Jamal Charlo, but maybe we ain't seen the best Jamal Charlo uh, due to the fact that Jamal Charlo was stating that, bro, it was hard to get out of bed and train for the likes of Jose Benavidez, right? But for Canelo, he would get out of bed. He'll train his butt off to see the likes of Canelo Alvarez, right? Then you had the idea of uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez versus uh, Terrence Crawford. Now, that couldn't happen next, right? It can't happen in... in in Cinco de Mayo month of May. It can't happen then because by then, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence should be having their second fight. But it's a scenario where maybe the third fight, he could probably try to fight uh, Terrence Crawford. But you also have the conversation of him fighting Jaime Moon Gill. You see what I'm saying? Which has been floating around. And Lord forbid they've already signed, right? If they've already signed the contract to see each other, then it's going to be a scenario where Canelo is going to get uh, uh, stripped off of technicality because if he was already in negotiations with Jaime Moon Gill, like you dig what I'm saying? Like it, it, it would kind of suck. It would kind of suck even though it would look like a duck move. It would kind of suck if he and Jaime has already uh, come to an agreement um, as far as money is concerned, negotiations is concerned, the date was already signed, the whole nine. And then uh, they they have to have this fight with Moon Gill and they've been really going to get the shot type ish and then he still gets stripped from the WBC goal. That that'd be kinda strange. But it is what it is, man. Is it a possible um scenario where Canelo Alvarez could fight somebody else without fighting Dave Benavidez or do you guys think that he's gonna vacate the title? Do you guys think that he's gonna lowball him in uh the negotiations? Like what do you guys see this being? Or will they see each other, bro? Cinco de Mayo month of May two thousand twenty four, uh Dave Benavidez versus Canelo Alvarez for undisputed, all right? We ain't talking about uh, him vacating the WBC goal and forcing David Benavidez to go and uh, be just WBC champion by itself, like, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he be the champion in recess and Benavidez get to fight for the WBC goal. Like, I'm not, t I'm talking about undisputed, bro. All four championship goals, David Benavidez versus Canelo Alvarez, the best man coming out uh, on, on top as the victor. And the new king of 168, would it be the remaining king uh, or the same king as far as uh, Canelo Alvarez, who has been the king for a little while at 168, 
I would it be a new king of 168 uh, in David Benavidez. But this is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. And did I miss anybody, what I was saying on this video? Leave all that in the comment section below, and I'll get to you guys when I can. Again, RTH Podcast, host, Nephew, I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, yeah, bruh. Peace. RTH Podcast going live, man, with Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion, but remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No my tier, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.